Hello everybody. Today we will be discussing 2023 IJPP January to March edition. The topic that we are going to be discussing is antibiotic resistance to community acquired infections. Okay, so if such a question is asked or if such a patient comes, what you need to know is antibiotic resistance is a threat not just to one patient, one area. It's basically a global threat. Okay. Why? Because we are having existing organisms which are turning resistant to existing antibiotics. We are having new organisms, mutated organisms. But the rate at which these resistant organisms are coming up, we are not having that many antibiotics which are getting manufactured or produced at the same rate. Okay. So recognizing this threat, WHO came up with bacterial priority pathogens list. Okay, so this started somewhere around 2015-17 types. So they came up with the first set of lists and in 2024, they have revised the list. So basically, they have given list of resistant organisms and they have categorized them into critical, high risk and medium risk group. So what is sad is that there are a lot of community acquired organisms also included in this group. Okay, so critical, we have Acinetobacter. We have third generation cephalosporin resistant uh, enterobacteriaceae and you have carbapenem resistant enterobacterials. Okay, so your enterobacterials can be community acquired also. For example, your UTA. High risk group, we are having typhoid, we are having shigella, we are having uh, salmonella, non typhoid salmonella. So these are all community acquired. Staphylococcus, more and more staphylococcus are MRSA, which are community acquired. Okay, medium risk group, we are having streptococcus pneumoniae, group A streptococcus, H influenza and group B streptococcus. Mycobacterium tuberculosis has been classified as a critical group. Okay, rifampicin resistant mycobacterium tuberculosis. So in your introduction, you need to write, uh, this is a global threat. Lot of community acquired organisms are having antibiotic resistance and WHO has come up with a bacterial priority pathogen list in critical high risk and medium group where many of the organisms are community acquired. Then you can start describing these organisms one by one. You can also talk about this global action plan for antimicrobial resistance. Okay, so their main objectives basically are like what we discussed. So we, they want to improve awareness regarding this antimicrobial resistance. They want to strengthen the surveillance. They want to reduce the incidence of such resistant infections. And if at all it comes, we need to optimize the use of antibiotics. And we need to uh, invest in creating more new antibiotics so that these organisms can be combated. Okay. So these are all the goals of the global action plan. So one by one, if we discuss, just key points I will discuss. Okay. So resistance among common uropathogens. The common uropathogens are E. coli and Klebsiella. Correct. These are the two organisms that we see apart from Chotomoto, Proteus, Pseudomonas, Enterobacter, those things. The common first line antibiotic that we generally give for uncomplicated urinary tract infection can be Cefixin. Okay. But the problem is they are, these organisms are producing beta lactamases. So when these produce beta lactamases, then it becomes a therapeutic challenge for us. We can't put this patient on an oral antibiotic and send them home. So we have to add a beta-lactamase inhibitor, correct? So we started giving beta-lactams, bacteria produced beta-lactamases, so we are giving beta-lactamase inhibitors, like your piprazilin tazobactam combination, correct? So piprazilin is your beta-lactam, your tazobactam will be your beta-lactamase inhibitor, okay? So if you are um, finding an organism which is resistant to your third generation cephalosporin, then your piprazilin tazobactam will be a good option. So some studies say non-susceptibility to your ceftrioxone with the MIC being more than 2 is a surrogate marker. But it has, this has its own set of limitations. So always look at the culture reports before prescribing antibiotic. Okay. So if you are having an E. coli or a Klebsiella and it is showing resistance your Piptaz also, then you will have to go for your carbapenem group of medications which will be your meropenem. Okay. So this is all till your susceptibility pattern is available. Once you have a susceptibility pattern, then you can always make a oral switch. Cefixim, amoxiclav, 
your uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole i'm not used much that can be used okay your quinolones okay but not good for very young children so if you have a carbapenemase resistance also then now the question comes now meropenem also you can't use what else can you use so it is found that nearly 10% of e coli and 40% of your klebsiella pneumonia can have carbapenemase resistant okay so in case of carbapenem resistant you can use your quinolone ciprofloxacin levoflox if you can identify what carbapenemase it is then you can do septazirem avibacta with or without your astreonam combination when will you choose astreonam combination you will choose astreonam combination with septazirem avibacta if it is a ndm new delhi metalloproteinase producer okay when will you use or when we when can you get away with just septazirem avibacta if it is um, any other carbapenemase producer okay for example say you are seeing some oxa okay non acinetobacter oxa that is then you can just do away with septazirem avibacta if it is say uh, amc producer then then also your septazirem avibacta is a good option okay be very wary when you are using phosphomycin because phosphomycin you can use it for e coli but not for your klebsiella because klebsiella can have something called as a phos a g okay so they can be naturally inherently resistant to your phosphomycin so this is about your enterobacteria so in uh, europathogens what do you write you will write the initial beta lactam then beta lactam is then you will talk about bl bla combination peptase then if there is a resistance then you will talk about carbapenem then if there is a resistance there you can talk about fluoroquinolone versus your uh, checking for your carbapenemase production which carbapenemase it is correct so if you know what type of carbapenemase then you can choose to use either septa av plus astreonam or just septa av phosphomycin for uti can be used if it is uncomplicated but you need to know what organism it can be used for equally next comes salmonella salmonella you you can write a similar story earlier days le they used to get away with just ampicillin chloramphenicol and cotrimoxazole then later this salmonella developed resistance to all of these groups then we started using fluoroquinolones then in 2000 fluoroquinolones ko it started becoming resistant so because of resistance to fluoroquinolone we started using uh, cephalosporins now cephalosporin also on and off here and there some resistance is emerging so we can use azithromycin there are also some reports as to using combination of cephalosporin and azithromycin where it is shown to be more effective okay remember a practical point whenever you are treating enteric fever the deprivation of fever will be later compared to any other bacterial organism usually we counsel parents 48 hours la fever will come down but when you are treating for enteric it will come down only by 4 to 5 days not before that okay so that is about salmonella next streptococcus pneumoniae when you are talking about streptococcus pneumoniae you need to know which streptococcus pneumonia you are talking about meaning which part ka whether it is non meningeal or meningeal as far as non meningeal is concerned generally they are susceptible to penicillin okay less than 1% is where you have resistance to penicillin say you are isolating it from lung okay then it is still generally very susceptible to your penicillin you can get away with using ceftriaxone okay a recent study most of these uh, antimicrobial resistance studies in india they are conducted in cmc vellore okay va so there when they have done to look for um, uh, resistance for your streptococcus pneumoniae in children 5 years of age nearly 10% of resistance rate to penicillin they have noted them in invasive pneumococcal isolates both meningeal and non meningeal okay but vancomycin resistance is not there so generally if it is a non meningeal pneumococcus say for example it's a pneumonia ceftriaxone is a good drug of choice okay amoxicillin is a good drug of choice if you are having a meningeal isolate on the other hand say a csf is showing pneumococcus okay so you need to be really careful because the chances of resistance is more okay you need to know this nearly 45% and 15% in you imagine 
it is non susceptible to penicillin and cefotaxin respectively so if you are having a pneumococcus in the brain you are isolating your you are seeing organism in the csf in gram stain better cover with cefotaxim or ceftriaxone plus vancomycin combination till you have a culture report okay so it should be combination not a single drug unlike your uh, uh, lung say coming pneumococcus okay remember this point so non meningeal susceptibility is still good meningeal susceptibility is reduced for penicillin and cephalosporin group this is about your pneumococcus next staphylococcus aureus more and more community acquired are coming more and more methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus are coming your drug of choice will depend on where your infection is okay so if you are having skin and soft tissue infection that is one of the most common community acquired um, mrsa that you can get okay yeah if you are having a blood stream infection associated with it vancomycin will be your drug of choice okay clindamycin will be a close second provided you are not having a inducible resistance to clindamycin advantage of clindamycin is you have a oral option vancomycin le you will have to do iv okay so it is not uh, enough if you think okay staphylococcus this is community acquired this is not going to be resistant you need to be really really aware that resistant staphylococcus is still coming from the community and it is rising come from the community next mycobacterium tuberculosis at the mycobacterium tuberculosis all of you will be able to write ba seriya so it is one of the uh, most uh, common um, how to tell community acquired organism which has a very high mortality rate if it goes undetected so tb deaths la like 80% of tb deaths occurred in children less than 5 years of age among the total deaths so that is why this is significant and drug resistant tuberculosis is on the rise that is why we specifically look for rifampicin resistance and when there is rifampicin resistance there can be coexistent isoniazid resistance also okay so nearly 3.4% of new cases and 18% of previously treated cases had multi drug resistant or rifampicin resistant tuberculosis okay so you always need to look for resistance and then see if you have to modify your uh, primary treatment regimen so the we have discussed i think enterobacteriaceae we have discussed about uh, typhoid we have discussed about uh, pneumococcus in brain pneumococcus elsewhere we have discussed about staphylococcus and we have discussed about mycobacterium tuberculosis so write two to three lines two to three lines in each of these organisms and you can conclude by telling that it is on the rise and we need to be aware of antimicrobial susceptibility testing and initiating appropriate antibiotics you can start with broad spectrum in a sick patient if it is a icu patient and then you need to narrow it down as early as possible okay so that is important once you have your susceptibility pattern you need to narrow your antibiotics targeting only the organism and we need to be aware and um, you can also write about who aware program okay so you will read up and you will put it in the comments what is who aware program this can also come as a short note or maybe as part of a oski for you okay thank you bye bye